and welcome to another episode of the Sacred Wisdom Podcast. I am, of course, joined with my brother today, Stephen Denman, and we're going to answer more of the questions that you ask throughout the Tartarian series that we've been making on this podcast. And we dealt with some in the last episode where we spoke about various questions that you asked and we honed in on. And on this episode, it's on the reset of Tartaria. I'll put this question up on the screen, but I'm not going to go through the whole question because it's very long. But this is generally asking about the Christ consciousness and the divide between how the powers that be have controlled us and made us separate from this Christ consciousness and separate from this God consciousness. Right. So, Steve, in answer to this question, please, what would give us some, what do you think on that? Well, as we've discussed many times in the Sacred Wisdom podcast, the Christ consciousness was a, a centralised aspect to the cultures and the spiritual development of the Nordic Tatarians, both the, as families, so children and adults together, in the healing temples of the villages, towns and cities. Yeah. So on this planet, I believe there's been a long-term spiritual war that has continued for a, you know, a very, very, very long period of time over many thousands of years mm. and so the christ consciousness was seen as something that had to be literally disrupted as a main emphasis within the civilization of great tataria and northern russia by the elites and the secret societies so this is the reason why they had to try and create a blockage a, a try and create some kind of intermediate severance that would actually prevent the Nordic Tatarians or Tatarian Aryans from obviously continually aspiring to developing their own sense of Christ consciousness, that sense of knowing the infinite oneness and the infinite nowness coming from the universal creator of heaven and earth. And so when we take a look at the, the first mud flood, second mud flood, third mud flood, the orphan trains movement, the emergence of the industrial revolution, the, 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 the eradication of cultures for yeah, our planet Earth. Yeah. The, the progressive despiritualization of the usage and focusing on the Christ consciousness that was so prevalent across mm. Great Tataria. And as you know, I've said it many times before, Great Tataria was comprised of Northern Tataria, Eastern Tataria, Southern Tataria, Western Tataria, all geographically in Northern Russia. Mm. And that obviously went up and up to the, even the Kola Peninsula, the Mamangsta Blast, as it's known today in Northwestern Russia, on the border with Finland. So it's a huge expanse where the Christ consciousness was practiced on a regular basis. So yeah, th this has been a, a war that has gone on, a spiritual war, on an etheric level. You can say it touches in what goes on in the astral plane, as well as in this 3D holographic reality that we define as the material dimension. Mm -hmm. And the Nordic Tatarians or the Tatarian Aryans, they exemplified that Christ consciousness. They had an absolute adoration of wanting to reach out and to know the Lord God Almighty or the universal creator every day of their lives here on planet Earth. Mm. And that's very unique for a civilization to be that way because almost every civilization on planet Earth has never been that way. Mm. So there was a great motivation by the elites and secret societies to really find any way to disrupt, fragment and create any kind of temporal severance or spiritual severance in many ways of that need to focus on the Christ consciousness and that combined with the free energy systems, the drawing down of the bangless amounts of telluric electricity from the atmosphere into their various buildings in the towns and cities of Great Tataria are all aspects that were looked at. And there was a lot of envy and a lot of resentment that they had this wonderful, you know, somatic based occult technology and anti gravity based occult technology combined in a very uh, balanced form, equated form with their own spiritual development, where they mm. focused on the Christ consciousness in the healing temples. Mm. So, yeah, that's really what has gone on and it's been going on for thousands of years is the need to try and separate or divide homo sapiens or human beings from aspiring to and focusing on the Christ consciousness which is all the higher consciousness you can call it higher consciousness. higher consciousness Christ consciousness yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean we're, it's, this isn't just obviously from the yeah, the perspective of the Holy Bible mm. we're not talking just about the, the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua Ben Yosef mm. this is a universal belief system yeah so the, the the Christ being there are literally millions of Christ beings mm. that incarnate on billions of planets across the Milky Way galaxy, the Sagittarius. We will, uh, we, you yeah. know, mention just at this point, Howard Storm. We will yeah. be talking about Howard Storm. Incredible account of what happened to him. And That's right. we'll be going yeah, into more absolutely. detail about that. Sorry, Steve. 
Yeah, so, you know, you look at near-death experience that Howard Storm had, for example. Yeah. You know, he was an avowed atheist. He's now a born-again Christian, mm. and his descent into what he believed was the infernal regions, also known as hell, which is in the lower astral. Mm. And we can see that these demonic forces that are at work there probably are in, in literally in some kind of alignment with vibrationally with the elites and secret societies and with great envy and resentment and hatred wanted to destroy great Tataria because of that powerful need to focus on the Christ consciousness. It seems that some of the actions, especially over the last few years, seem so barbaric to the yes. people of this yeah. world. Yes. And that is very shocking. Mm. And that should be a big <laughs> yes. alarm bell in people's heads. They should be observing that yes. and see the inversion yes. that's happened. Yes. Um, it's happening everywhere. There will happen somewhere, and it happened in little sections as well. Brilliant. That's a really interesting question, Sasha Whitehead. Thank you very much for that. So one of the one of the things was uh, again we answered this at the beginning, yeah. but are Zachary and Stephen Denman actually <laughs> brothers? Well, on that note, and I, we never really kind of promoted this, but we've actually got a book that yes. we've written together mm -hmm. called Mysterious Realities. And yes, we are brothers, and we've worked together yes. for a long time. Always kind of come together and work together, but we wanted to bring these podcasts together to bring to you. And please, yeah. anybody wants to ask any questions, please leave them or email us, and, and we can always get back to you. The next episode we're going to discuss, and the questions from that episode, is the inheritors of Tartaria. So one of the questions is from at Sean Campbell 960 nine and he said sirs of the tunguska event of 1903 do you believe that the explosion was the late atomic event that was sent to obliterate tartaria all the yeah. best sean nyc okay well first it wasn't in 1903 it was the 30th of june 1908 that the tunguska incident took place right okay. in siberia in central russia or the right. russian far east it's sometimes called no that was a, 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 i totally believe it was just simply an asteroid it was a very large asteroid but it didn't impact on the actual ground in the siberian taiga which is these coniferous forests made of pines larches and spruce trees right in that part of central russia there it was literally an airburst effect so the obviously the atmospheric friction had burned away the asteroid and much of it literally shattered above ground probably 150 feet to maybe 200 feet 50 feet above that area in Tunguska in Siberia just and it exploded and it flattened thousands of acres of the coniferous actual Russian taiga forest mm. in that area of Siberia and central Russia so now there, there wasn't wow. some kind of uh, sort of negatively based occult technology to seek vengeance on Great Tatari. That was a totally separate event. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that, yeah. The next one is from an attacked 10N1 blah blah shift, I believe that is on the end. Please share book resources are about harvesting telluric energy and using it to power civilization and to benefit crops. I'm building a library on this subject and need reliable sources. Now, okay. I could just straight away say there, you know, you've got electroculture, you've got tons of There's information. Masses of books There's loads that, yeah. of information on this telluric energy and how it was harnessed yes. from the planet. And, you know, the, the mercury, how it was done exactly is still debatable. Of course, but obviously, open to speculation. Of course, course. but... What do you think on that? Well, I'd say that I, I think it's, there's such a n large number of books and documents that are available on the electroculture processes, mm. a lot of it going back to uh, the Georgian period, the Victorian age, and then the Edwardian period coming yeah. up to the beginning of World War One. Yeah. I would suggest people just type in electroculture yeah. and look at the documents that are available out there, many of which are obviously from old black and white uh, you know, photographs of black and white books that were written. So there's a lot of diagrams are, are not particularly clear, they're obviously mm. black and white. But, you know, it's out there already, the information is out there. Mm. So there was a lot of books made in the yeah. 18th century about, uh, you know, maybe a bit later, but electroculture yeah. and stuff. And, and there's a lot of detail on it. I will be going into more detail on the channel about electroculture as and well. And of course, the information they're looking for on the actual free energy systems, the telluric electricity. Again, what we've gone on is basically on a actual authentic photographic evidence yeah. from actually on the roof lines of thousands of buildings yeah. designed with Tartarian architecture. Yeah. But there is no actual schematics available in 
books that are old, you know, going back like 150, 200 years ago. Mm. But what there is, is vast amounts of documentation from the work of Nikola Tesla, Victor Schauberger, yeah. and many other individuals. And the inventors we spoke about yeah. in the episode the other week. Yeah. And, yeah, and there's so many individuals now working on perpetual yeah. motion, free energy systems, and actually drawing down electrical, uh, you know, energy from the atmosphere themselves using their own devices, using various metals like copper and aluminium and gold plates metals and, or alloys of some nature so there is a lot of information out there so for, to go into a specific list of you know specific titles and the names of authors is very long-winded mm -hmm. the information is out there I'd say if people just go and do the research it doesn't take a lot of time to do it on the internet yep. they can use Google they can use Yandex the information is out there you only have to go to Internet Archive and actually search on these subjects and you'll find lots of PDFs and books. Archive.org, yeah. Archive.org, and you can find lots of information yep. just on little books, PDFs, yep. old books that were produced on Electroculture. I've got found loads of them. Yes, there's and, loads. And there is a lot of information. A lot of out. English inventors, American yep. inventors, Russian inventors. And, and many of the inventors from mainland Europe, there's a lot of information, there's vast amounts. Yeah, it's um, a big thing. And I think it's interesting to note that when World War II ended on the 8th of May, 1945, yeah. that's when a lot of the, the ideas of all these, these rather industrious inventors suddenly started to vanish. They started to <laughs> dissipate and disappear. Yeah. We went into this, this, this Western world, went into this mass production, highly commercialized societal structures yeah. where these independent and entrepreneurs and these so-called wacky inventors a bit like you know the uh, the main scientists you see in like back to the future yeah you know that kind of mentality seemed to really just disappear mm. and, it, and that this is where we are today with all the multinationals and corporations and this is this is the, obviously we can see what's going on I mean, it's disturbing i don't know about the laws in the uk but i heard something from the us yeah where building energy systems can actually be illegal so to actually you yeah. can be arrested yes which is crazy, right? If you couldn't create an energy system that could solve the world's problems, yes, and yet you could be arrested for that. And wow, I mean, what a world that is! I mean, you um, imagine a world where we, everyone's got advanced three D printing technologies, yeah, free energy systems. They use right. the to draw occult technology devices, or electrical capacitors to draw down the electrical energies mm. from the atmosphere. It's quite profound that it would set humanity free. Mm. And again, I've said it before, we've mentioned it in previous Sacred Wisdom podcasts, but this whole idea of the cost of living crisis that's so-called here in the Western world and around planet Earth in the 21st yeah. century. Mate. But the idea of a, there's a cost to living as an incarnate human being, a sovereign individual before the universal well, creator of heaven and Earth. People have consented to that and they have believed in Absolutely. that. And they keep believing yeah. in it. Oh, of course. And yeah. I, I, you know, I, I get that. I understand that we need to work through and learn about our experience. Maybe if we were handed all these free energy systems and you know That's all right. the uh, health was sorted and everything was okay maybe we wouldn't be challenged but this uphill struggle mm. that humanity seems to be going through at the moment um, let's move on to the next question so yeah. we talked about the sharing resources so this is from lorenza lorenza obel monte and how many times has humanity been reset Ooh, that's a good question. I, I, I think that's um, <laughs> that you could say is the phrase would be open for debate. Yes. Um, I can say this over the last 7,500 to maybe 8,300 years, there's probably been a, at least 15, if not 16, major resets on the planet. Well, yep. we can call them world resets. Right, I okay. would say. Yeah, yeah. you say 16, 16. At, 15, at least 15 wow. to 16 but over the last wow. 7,500 to 8,300 years. Because that's going back to the. I love the way you've kind of worked that out. I'm looking at the historical timelines going back to the actual founding of the civilization of ancient Sumeria yeah. in the Fertile Crescent on the Arabian Peninsula. And then you go from there to the civilization of Akkad. And then on to that from to Babylon and right. Assyria yeah. and all the you know and obviously the different stages and classical yeah. Greece and yeah. in, in, and obviously the Roman Empire. Right. You can start you know and there's a lot of precise dates, especially with the classical Greeks and the Roman Italians on the rise and fall of their civilizations. You can you can go back. There's lots of records with the dynastic Chinese emperors over the last five thousand years yeah. on major climatic weather events, the solar cycles. 
you know, the, 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 the global warming, global cooling. It's very interesting when you look at all this information mm, and, and very precise dates, even the days of the week, the month and the years are given. Mm. It's that precise. It's mm. quite incredible. Do you think every reset we had, it was like we were taught new history? So, and then it was just re fabricated or recreated or I do you th think that history has always been consistent always been a semi-consistency of history throughout right i think most of the problems started during what's known as the early medieval period also yeah. as the dark ages the dark ages weren't a dark age at all what mm. was really going on was all the sacred knowledge all the shall we say the occult technology that had been rather commonplace yeah was the priesthoods then literally took that knowledge and this was obviously done through the roman catholic church yeah it was then basically removed from public access yeah just as the priests obviously in the chapels churches and cathedrals obviously would actually read the bible in both classical greek and mm. roman latin yeah but the, the, the actual parishioners the congregation or the laity could couldn't understand any of that language so the actual priest would have to translate that <laughs> so they were revered as the, the sacred knowledge holders mm, but they themselves were withholding that knowledge that was the real dark age creating actual distortions intellectual, intellectual ignorance amongst the masses yes, the populations yeah. of western europe and elsewhere yeah i can see that mm. I, that's very disturbing if you go back to the time of classical greece Mm. you can clearly see that there's obviously all the different philosophers mm. you, a vast amount of knowledge was shared in terms of mathematics and geometry you go back even further to the time of the irish druids and the british druids and as you know in this country in the, which is now the united kingdom of great britain known as albion at the time right. which the romans called britannia yeah when you look at this there was over seventy thousand or more students from many different countries being trained by the druidic priests mm. who had 20 years training themselves in astronomy and uh, the, the natural sciences and including mathematics and understanding even the you know the different species of trees yeah and and everything quite incredible the information that they were actually conveying and that was commonplace it wasn't withheld mm. and that really did start during the dark ages or the early medieval period i mean that's when we've got real evidence of that taking place on to the latest episode um that we are going to be doing more on tart area as well so that we're just sort of rounding up these questions from what we've already done but this was the knowledge from Tartaria. And yeah, I found this again fascinating because we looked at a lot of people inside that who have actually carried this knowledge, artists, creators, and inventors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the first question uh, we discovered was from an at wildcat underscore hellcat. And they say in Ayurvedic medicine, there is something about trying to achieve certain vocal tones speaking certain words or phrases in the perfect way that are supposed to be healing. So, yeah, I agree with that. That's a very good point. There certainly are. We have yeah. tones. But so, let's talk about that, Steve. Well, the actual, as we know, the healing temples and the, the towns and cities of Great Tatara and across northern Russia in general were places where great emphasis was put on the Christ consciousness and actually using tuning forks, the huge metal organs, as we've discussed in other Sacred Wisdom podcasts, the stained glass windows made of quartz crystal, different colored quartz crystal, create different actual wavelengths of light coming in. That was combined with the various types of singing that took place as the choirs you know, adulated and sung with this immense love and happiness mm for their you know their appreciation of the christ consciousness mm. so all they were just being alive being they're, alive and, and knowing being themselves as physically alive how special that is and, and knowing themselves as literally children of mm. the most high the universal creator of heaven and earth yeah and they, they fully understood the christ consciousness and how to understand that mm. was done through the process of using choirs and singing and tonal mm. patterns and pitch yeah and holding specific keys on the actual organ and using the tuning fork as a resonator mm. to literally augment or magnify mm. these sounds so they would intensely reverberate around the healing temples and combine obviously with the different wavelengths of light. This is information that's all there. And it is still use this stuff. And so yeah. at 
Chad or Lux, um, they're, they're, this is another question. I wonder when and how our species can rediscover this tech for us, the next cycle of this Earth. So they're saying when this tech will come about for the next cycle. Well, you know, you can say it's part of the New Age movement or the New Age community. There's a lot of talk being, yeah. and, and also scientific remote viewing is being done or SRV on this as well about a new golden age that could take place. Yeah. Any time from around 2035, 2036. Some are saying maybe 2042 to 2043. Mm. So it's not that, in terms of world history, that's not that far off in terms of no. the thousands of years of the rise of all the civilization. We don't so, sit around waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, we need to all be active and get on yes. with our lives, self-empower yeah. ourselves, it, eat healthily, yeah. you know, be careful of how much food we're actually consuming, yeah. and, and, and actually become as self-aware as possible, doing meditation or prayer work and detoxing in our bodies. That's right. We, we, th there's a lot of um, turmoil ahead, that's all I can say. A lot of changes coming you know, geopolitically, on, yeah. on economically on planet Earth over the next few years, to stay as grounded and focused as possible mm. and to achieve as much in our lives as possible is immensely important, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, the next time round will be in this golden age that possibly the arising of different types of related yeah. occult technology that connects back to Great Tataria and Northern Russia could arise again and be commercially available to be many quite. human beings across planet Earth. I do believe that will happen. Yeah. I think in time, I think, you know, and that is an optimism. I do really feel there will be a time when mm. this is coming back, and I feel it's going to be very soon. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be a shocking for a lot. Well, that's reassuring, <laughs> Zach. <you know? laughs> Absolutely. No, it's important well, because we need to have I, you know, I, I, stay focused on the positives on this. You know, this I agree. And, and, and when we say stay focused on the positives, we're not, we're not saying ignore the negative, yeah. but the, it, you understand vibrationally we need to stay in a positive vibration to lift. Absolutely. Like, so we can't yeah. operate in a low vibration. It's just a, a common known fact. Yes. Things can't exist in the same way. And Absolutely. we want to pull that energy up so we can inspire others and help others energy when you're walking down that street the influence you have on the surroundings you do not know mm -hmm. your mindset everything is so important really important times mm -hmm. yes so another question don't want to diverge like i do um at pete uh, amski 3792 he states um uh, uh, med beds are based on ancient technologies nothing new under the sun it's just going to be depressed it's just not going to be depressed anymore well it's truthful there there is a, but talk about the med beds because i i think they're a bit new age it i mean what what these these so-called med beds touch on loosely and it is loosely is actually the idea of radionics mm. so going yes. back to uh, the look. work of royal raymond rife and Jay Kellogg, was, he, what he did, it yeah. wasn't exactly radionics, was it? No, but not it exactly. He had luminescent electric bath. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, when you take a look at all the, these individuals, they had actually produced the technologies they had. <laughs> they did try and make them commercially viable. They yeah. did have funding streams, yeah. and they were fully documented. Yeah. Whereas when people just say, well, don't worry about having illnesses and sickness and all the rest of it, med beds are just around the corner. It's, it's the phrase I'd say is new age hopium. Yes. Amazing, Stephen. Yes. Thank you again, everybody. And um, until the next episode, it's a bye from me. And it's goodbye from me.